What up everybody? This is my Tulsa King episode 6 stable reaction. So we got Roxy, who I completely was off on. I thought this was Cologne Waltrip's girlfriend, but nah, she's Cologne Waltrip's second in command's girlfriend. And we start out the episode by finding out that she indeed is snitching. She is an informant. And so, and she is none other than Stacy Bill, the ATF agent and her partner informant. So, we got the episode starting off with Roxy snitching. And she, instead of snitching on, um... Uh, the motorcycle motorcycle game black macadam she starts telling them about dwight and stacy bill attempts to divert her back to cologne waltrip and black macadam and what they're doing but her partner is interested and contacts the feds and we also find out through this little scene that Stacy Bill's alcoholism is getting worse because Roxy smells vodka on Stacy Bill's breath. And we know from the first episode or the second episode, I think it was, that she is supposed to be a recovering alcoholic, but that ain't going too good for her. So the FBI is contacted and they start looking into Bodie. So Bodie gets under investigation. The feds show up at his home and his place of business, his shop, which has been closed down ever since he had his little run-in with Waltrip and Waltrip boys. I guess he was waiting for Dwight to get back in town for Dwight's protection. But the thing is, they found nothing. They found no money, no weed, nothing in Bodie's shop for them to seize because Dwight and Mitch had already moved everything up out of there without Bodie even knowing about it. So Bodie thought he had been here for everything, but the but Dwight expected the feds to show up. So they moved the product to Mitch's bar. Back in New York, Chicky is asking for permission from his dad Pete to kill Dwight for killing Nico. He says that Dwight is out of control. It took him and the boys five hours to clean up the mess he made from Nico. And he also wants Dwight's daughter Tina killed. I guess that's because he, she was the one who provoked Dwight to go do what he did. I mean, no what kind of man Dwight is to tell him that kind of information. I mean, what you think he gonna do about it? Uh, forgive the man? No, nah, that ain't the type of guy Dwight is. So, Dwight took care of him. And I think Tina knew about that. So, but Pete ain't having it. He actually slaps Chicky and puts Chip thinks he puts Chicky back in line and says he ain't even half the man that Dwight that Dwight is because if he was half the man that Dwight was this none of this would have ever happened so probably true you ain't gonna show up to know where Dwight is and beat someone down with and just see Dwight watching but anyway without an explanation at least I mean if you gave Dwight an explanation about what happen i'm sure he'd give you his blessing to do what do what you got to do to nico or the person in that position but later on in the episode we see is actually the end of the episode we see chicky attack tina's husband he beats him down and breaks his neck and he does this all behind his father's back because you gotta ask what is a mob underboss doing handling his own business I mean, I wasn't, I wasn't in the mafia game. I was in the D-boy game in the drug industry. But I mean, I'm not going to have no, I'm not going to handle that kind of business myself beating someone down. Unless, I mean, I have to in self-defense. I'm going to send someone to go handle that for me. And I wasn't even near that high up. But I guess he's making sure he doesn't have any loose ends. 
because he don't want his he don't want this tracing back to him to his father finding his father find out he went behind his back to do this to Dwight's son-in-law so but Dwight does tell Tina before he leaves New York about what was going on so she was expecting it she got a phone call before this happened that just hung up so she was already on on her toes but Dwight was explaining what you expect me to do you do with the information that you gave me so Dwight gets back to Tulsa and he learns about everything that happened in the previous episode with Bodie and Tyson. How they got shook down by the cops, the crooked cops and Cologne Waltrip's crew and everything that happened to him. So he gets, learns about that. And therefore, Armand and Roxy, the snitch... It'd be funny if they, we, we, he, he still ain't tell his mafia people that Armand is down there in, in cowboy land, Tulsa, Oklahoma, so, <laughs> he might be very well lying to Dwight all the way to this point, and he might be snitching himself, might be two snitches working, that might be the cowboy ranch for snitches, but we don't know that about Armand yet, so far he's, we just know that he is, there because he wanted out knew too much information feared for his life so that's why uh dwight is not even telling them but it could be a setup why armin is playing dwight at the same time but anyway they set up a face-to-face -face with waltrip and dwight and the meeting is uneventful not too much comes out of it but we do learn that dwight is planning to get out of the nitrous game and move on to other endeavors but the fact that Waltrip doesn't take that L lightly he was not going to take that L lying down I would have been in his best interest Dwight's getting out your business man you took one loss yeah it was a big one through your big festival that happens every year but he's out the game man y'all ain't really going to be competitors like that y'all ain't going to be competitors like that so move on but Waltrip does not move on he actually goes to retaliate and by doing this he sends his number two Carson Pike to shoot up Mitch's bar and while he's shooting up Mitch's bar Dwight and Mitch come out through the side and strike him right through the chest I think it's Mitch with the double barrel shotgun right to the stomach and ends it cancels Christmas for Carson Pike. So Pison gone. So instead of just squashing this beef and taking the L, now Waltrip's number two is dead. And you gotta ask the question, moving on, will Waltrip want war? And will Waltrip keep the informant Roxy around now that her boyfriend Carson Pike is dead? But we do know this moving forward, that Roxy will snitch on Dwight about her boyfriend to the feds. So Dwight probably going to be able to snake his way out of it and by getting rid of the body or whatever he's going to do and not having no evidence pointing back to him. But they are going to be looking at Dwight. The feds is going to be looking at Dwight for this body. I mean, I'm guaranteeing this. Roxy will snitch this back. She going to say her her boyfriend went to do a job for Cologne Waltrip to shoot up this bar. And he ain't ever come back. So this is going to not be good. And Stacy Bill was already trying to get Dwight to become a snitch and set up Cologne Waltrip. <laughs> Dwight did 25 years in prison. Come on, man. He ain't going to start snitching today or tomorrow. But Mitch does decide to make Dwight his partner at the bar after killing after killing this man. He shakes Dwight's hand and says they're going to become partners. So that's Dwight's next endeavor. So he got this going on with Mitch now. And it's Mitch claims that the bar ain't really doing too well. But Dwight says that they're going to turn it around and get the bar back operating good again. And moving forward... We know that Dwight called New York. The guy, Goody. He is the New York Mafia Conciliaire. He has known Dwight a long time. 
And we know that in the next episode, Goody is going to come to Tulsa, Oklahoma to try to work things out. Because Dwight calls him to work things out. But he's going to be sent as a spy to learn Dwight's operation. So, there you have it. That is my Tulsa King Episode 6 Stable Breakdown and Review. Leave your thoughts in the comments.